Looking to improve your game? You can now sign up for CFB Pro using the promo code LVD, get access to articles and deck guides by the world's best. Hello and welcome to another Historic Games video. Today we're taking a look at a green-white plus one plus one counter synergy deck as voted on by my supporters on Patreon. And the deck features a card added in the latest anthology expansion, which is Dromoka's Command, a two mana instant that lets us choose two modes between preventing all damage target instant or sorcery spell would deal this turn, which can also prevent a damaged based sweeper from wiping our board. Target player sacrifices an enchantment, put a plus one plus one counter on target creature, and finally target creature we control fights target creature we don't control. So the two modes we're going to use most often are to put a plus one counter on our creature and have one of our creatures fight an opposing creature, making this a very efficient removal spell, especially synergistic in a deck with plus one counter synergies with cards like Conclave Mentor, making that plus one counter even more valuable. Then we're also a collected company deck, don't have the highest hit rate with company with only 28 creatures, some of which are one drops that aren't always too exciting to hit, but I think company is still worth including. And then the only other non-creature card in the deck is Vivian Arcbow Ranger. A 4 mana planeswalker starts out at 4 loyalty. The plus 1 distributes 2 plus 1 plus 1 counters among up to 2 target creatures. They also gain trample until end of turn. The minus 3 gives us more removal, saying target creature we control deals damage equal to its power to target creature or planeswalker. And the minus 5 lets us take a creature from our sideboard and put it into our hand. And we've got 7 sideboard creatures to choose from, including Scavenging Ooze from our Graveyard Hate and Life Gain, Knight of Autumn to blow up any artifacts or enchantments, Questing Beast can take out Planeswalkers or prevent fog effects from stopping the team, Shifting Ceratops shines against blue decks, especially ones with a lot of counter spells, Yasharn can stop Sacrifice decks, Thrag Tusk if we need to gain 5 life immediately, and Verger's Gearhulk can also be a great finisher, especially with a Conclave Mentor in play, as every one of those plus one plus one counters represents even more damage. And then taking a look at the rest of the deck, at 1 mana we've got the full playset of Lenor Elves to speed up the deck. We also have 4 copies of Pelt Collector, a 1-1 one -one that will grow over time as larger creatures enter the battlefield or die on our side of the battlefield, eventually also gaining Trample if it has 3 or more plus 1 counters on it. And 2 copies of Swarm Shambler, which enters the battlefield with a plus 1 plus 1 counter on it, and whenever a creature we control with a plus 1 plus 1 counter on it becomes the target of a spell an opponent controls, we get to make a 1-1 one -one green insect creature token, and for 1 mana we can tap the Shambler to put an additional plus 1 plus 1 counter on it. Then at 2 mana, of course, one of the most important cards in the deck is Conclave Mentor, a 2 mana 2-2, two -two, saying if one or more plus 1 counters would be put on a creature we control, that many plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 counters are put on that creature instead. And when the Mentor dies, we also gain life equal to its power. We've got 2 copies of Scavenging Ooze, giving us some main deck graveyard hate and life gain. Great if we can combine it with our removal like Dromoka's Command and Vivian, as it'll give us more food in the graveyard. And then the full playset of Luminarch Aspirants, a 2 mana 1 1, saying at the beginning of combat on our turn, we can put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on target creature we control, so that can also quickly get out of hand. And then at 3 mana, another great payoff for the deck is Oran Reef Ooze, a 2 2, that when it enters the battlefield, we can put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on target creature we control, and when the Ooze attacks, put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on each attacking creature with a plus 1 plus 1 counter on it, so that can very quickly get out of hand, especially in combination with a Conclave Mentor. And then we also have two copies of Rishkar, P my Renegade, a legendary 2-2 two -two that when it enters the battlefield we put a plus one plus one counter on each of up to two target creatures, and each creature we control that has a counter on it can also tap for green mana, so that makes our deck very explosive, great for ramping out Collected Company and Vivian Arcbow Ranger. And then finally we also have two copies of Elite Spellbinder, definitely a flex slot so you can swap it out for any other 3 mana creature you prefer, but it does give us a nice 3 part creature that can help grow Pelt Collector, and it also gives us an evasive threat, plus a bit of hand disruption so we can take a look at the opponent's hand, exile a non-land card from it, and the opponent will have to pay 2 additional mana to play it. And then of course our 4 drops Collected Company and Vivian, and then our mana base includes 22 lands, including 12 dual lands with Temple Garden, some Petal Grove and our Pathway, and then 2 copies of Hashup Oasis, giving us an additional mana sink, potentially pumping one of our creatures, and then 6 basic forests and 2 basic planes. So that's our deck, now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the draw. And uh, this hand would have been great if we were able to cast turn 1 elves, but sadly we drew Grove and Plains as our lands. We're on the draw, so we could still draw an untapped green source. I'll try it. Turn 1 Islands into Spectral Sailor main phase. And we luckily drew the forest. 
So Elves doesn't speed up our next turn necessarily, but it does let us cast Company a turn sooner. And then now probably lead with Aspirants. Could also keep up Dromoka's command at instant speed. But that's probably more valuable once the opponent commits a Cure Obsession, which we can also make them sacrifice with command. Alright, blue-green flash. And yeah, we're just gonna pass. If our opponent taps out, we can company. Normally in this deck we want a main phase company, since we have cards like uh, Luminarch Aspirant that benefit from being in play. Opponent keeps up 4 mana. Well, hopefully they don't have a rewind. Just gonna be a sinister sabotage. So now we can main phase the other company and resolve it. And hit the Rishkar Pelt Collector. And let's put counter on Elves and Rishkar himself. Alright, so now we've got a nice board presence. Another company. So let's play Mentor, see if they have a response. And then we can still cast Company thanks to Rishkar. Do have to be aware of Night Pack Ambusher. So we're probably gonna pass if our opponent lets the Mentor resolve. And then we can either Company or Dromoka's commands accordingly. And if they run out Ambusher, we get to kill it with Dromoka's command here. Plus one counter fight. And then probably have to put the counter here and fight with Rishkar. We get two counters thanks to the Mentor, so we get to take out Ambusher without the opponents getting to make a wolf. Opponent's gonna bounce Rishkar, that's fine. Alright, so we still have the mana to play Ooze and Company. Don't have the mana to Rishkar and Company if they counter Rishkar. So let's play Ooze. Probably wanted to tap my planes there so we have more green mana for ooze activations. Move to combats. And we'll attack with these two. Alright, a wildborn preserver gonna try and ambush Conclave Mentor. So we'll let them block flashing company and hope to find something to put a counter on the mentor. And we did not quite, but Spellbinder and Aspirin seems fine. Pelt Collector gets two counters now that the Mentor is still in play. And Essence Capture is going to cost two more mana. So as the dust settles, we were pretty far ahead on board. Don't really need to resolve another card for us to be able to win this. And that essence capture now four mana. And our opponent explodes. Sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a fine hand. Turn one thought is gonna try and punch a hole in our game plan, and taking mentor is gonna be effective as our only two drop at the moment. 
but our hand is powerful. Turn to Dusk Legion Zealots, it might be a Vampire's deck. Shambler at least gives us a play. And Rishkar can also help us empty our hand faster. Alright, so our opponent missed our land drop. Their hand probably has a Sorin in it, which is a card I don't want them to play. So I think Spellbinder is reasonable to potentially delay Sorin. Alright, there's a Sorin. What else do they have? Inquisition, Aetherborn. Yeah, a bunch of stuff we don't care about as much as Sorin here. And they did find third land. Inquisition maybe takes Rishkar or Ooze. Takes Rishkar. And Aetherborn. Decent creature on the ground. And Romoka's command is interesting. Not the best at fighting Death Touch creatures. So another Spellbinder. Might be the play if we play Ooze. Next turn I could potentially set up a play with Dromoka's command. Although we're probably not fighting the Aetherborn. Although I could fight the Knight of the Evil Legion if that's what they play. So Ooze might still be okay. And then we wait for Spellbinder to maybe make their Champion of Dusk more expensive. And for now, I'll put counter on Spellbinder. Plays out a Blood Mage, which is also Vampire. And Faceless Haven, which they can't activate just yet because of Castle. Aetherborn attacks, so. Maybe sets up an attack with Orin Reef Ooze. So if I were to Dromoka's command, I could put counter on the Orin Reef Ooze itself, let it fight the Blood Mage, although then if we attack, it does grow up to a 4 4, but it will have to damage on it, so they could trade for both Zealots. But I think that's still an acceptable outcome, since we trade for the opponent's entire board almost. And we still get to grow Shambler and Spellbinder. Alternatively, I could play Spellbinder to make their Champion of Dusk more expensive. And then just attack with a Spellbinder here. Yeah, I kind of like that as well. Haunt of Hightower combo with Sorin, but just take a Champion of Dusk. And hit for four. So our opponent is potentially taking a lethal in the air next turn. Especially once we factor in Orin Refuse. So we'll take four. And the ghoul is fine. And a knight which can grow. Alright, so I could play Vivian, put counters on both spellbinders. 8, 9, and then grow them with Ooze, which is lethal. I love everything from deer to dinosaurs. We're fit enough to survive. It's 11 exactly in the air. Alright, so the two flyers getting it done here, showing the value of Elite Spellbinder in the deck. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with an acceptable hand. We even picked up another two drop in case we don't need to Dromoka's command. Opponent fetches basic islands. And a brainstorm. Alright, so turn to ooze. Turn three ooze, although a slightly different one. So 
Sulfur Falls untapped. Second company could be great, assuming we find land for. The ooze could also be useful if our opponent is playing a Mystic's Mastery deck, so we can exile whatever card they try and target. No land for the opponent to target with their Field of Ruin just yet, so they cannot shuffle their Brainstorm. Opponent will stomp the ooze before it can exile anything. Just means we get to play another ooze. And then probably still put counter on Oran Reef Ooze so it doesn't die to another stomp. Next turn we can main phase collected company in case we hit Luminar Casperant, for instance. Now they can feel the Vrun, but we've got basic planes to search. Opponent got a swamp, so maybe a Grixis control deck. Well, still gonna main phase company. Hope we don't run into a sweeper next turn. Did hit Aspirant and Belt Collector, I think. And then put counter, probably just on Pelt Collector. Opponent's down to 8. So hopefully no Languish or Extinction events or Ritual of Sits. There's a Languish. Alright, that's unfortunate. Just gonna main phase company again. And Spellbinder or Double Orn Reef Ooze. Spellbinder to have a look seems useful. And then we'll take an Orn Reef Ooze, put counter on itself. Alright, so Behold the Multiverse, Narset, Ashok, Nicol Bolas, Gearhulk. So the only card that matters is Nicol Bolas. Or Narset if it can find cheap interaction. They can of course play the Giant as a blocker. But Dromoka's Command is going to get that out of the way. So Dromoka's Command we can cast after attacking. So let's go to combats, attack, ooze triggers, and then now we can fight and put a counter on it. There we go. And our opponent concedes. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a hand that could use a third land, especially a white one. But I think we'll try it. Can always curve Pelt Collector into Ooze. And then any third lands lets us play two more Oozes. Against Black Rat, the Graveyard Hate ability on Ooze is usually going to be quite useful. Looks like Grixis, Stitcher Supplier, so definitely gonna make use of our scavenging ooze this game and we can attack if they block we can wait and see what else they mill over for us to exile all right so both a reanimator deck and a mystic mastery plus ultimatum deck for now we can wait and then end of turn maybe use the ooze or we can play another one although we might get punished by a sweeper so we'll just pass and then use our ooze accordingly. Prismari commands, just targeting the opponent since we can grow the ooze to get it out of the 2 damage range. So we'll wait to see what else they discard here. Makes a treasure. And then end of turn. Probably going for the Umburial Rites and a creature. Let's make it Elishnorn. So we'll start with Elishnorn in case they have a shock so we can still respond and grow the ooze. And then go for the Umburial Rites. And I could tap out for ooze, but it feels safer to just keep up scavenging ooze activations. 
since we're pressuring the opponents. And our opponent's deck probably doesn't do much if we can shut off access to the graveyard. No shortage of Praetors in their deck. So what do we get rid of here? Probably start going for the creatures. Attack. Opponent can jump. So maybe their plan is to eventually hard cast some of their expensive creatures. But yeah, turn two scavenging ooze essentially gonna win us this game. And our opponent explodes. So definitely a convenient match for us to be color screwed and just activate our ooze a bunch. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a fine hand. Not a great hand for growing Pelt Collector. Although we can still grow it with uh, Aspirin's trigger at least. Swamp into Thoughtseize probably takes Aspirin's. Could also go for Company. That's kind of the bigger long term issue. Heartless Acts kills Aspirants. Scavenging Ooze could be useful. Ooze activate or Ooze plus Shambler. If we Ooze activate and they kill the Ooze, we also grow the Pelt Collector. So, yeah, let's eat our own Aspirants and hit for two. Doing it main phase in case of another Heartless Act, so we put a count from the Ooze to protect it. Your opponent black white looks pretty controlling. Alright, looks like angels aspirants fine draw. So shambler aspirants and keep up scavenging ooze. And then we can activate to his end of turn, just in case the opponent has some graveyard synergy. Ah, Resplendent Angel can be scary, but luckily no way for them to gain 5 life immediately. Alright, so this turn I can put a count from Pelt Collector with the Aspirants. Just gonna grow the Shambler. Probably no attack with Ooze. I'll happily trade with Resplendent Angel, opponent takes it instead. Also reasonable to keep land in hand. And then maybe just pass without activating Shambler, represent a collected company. Although at 4 life, our opponent's probably not going to fire off the Thoughtseize. So our opponent passes. Might as well eat a Heartless Act. Oran Refuse is exciting. Can play its pre combats to put our counter somewhere else to maybe enable an attack. What could the opponent be holding? I guess a Settler Wreckage could be within the cards. So that's a reason not to attack with more than one creature. So how about... Oran Reef Ooze. Put another counter on Pelt Collector. And just kind of load up on one creature. They need 6 mana to activate Resplendent Angel. So our opponent jumps, that's fine.
And now we have more food for the scavenging ooze as well. 70 points plays just to activate Resplendent Angel. I don't think that's going to be good enough. Right, opponent goes for it anyway. So they gain 5 and make a 4-4 blocker. So we can attack with a team. Aspirant can put counter on Ooze. And yeah, our opponent seems very dead. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with an exciting draw. Elves into turn to Mentor plus another one drop. Could also go for Aspirant first and then Mentor. Although Mentor into Swarm Shambler, make it 2 2 Shambler right away. Is tempting. Opponent with a turn one looting off a snarl. Discards Dragonstorm and Lathless. Okay. So definitely a matchup for scavenging ooze. But uh, our job is just to apply as much pressure as possible, kill the opponent before they can set up their combo. So do we aspirant or do we mentor shambler? I think mentor shambler is fine here. And then we might draw some other creatures with plus one counter synergies, which is why having the Mentor already in play can be beneficial. Collected Company, of course, one of our better draws. So we can expect to turn four Mizzix Mastery, casting a Dragonstorm. So ideally we can kill the opponent before then. Another Aspirant, although we only have single white. So my play this turn is going to be Aspirants. Elves activate Shambler. Tank for four. So it doesn't look like we're going to be able to present lethal next turn, although we can get close. I think we have 15 damage on the board with what we have in hand, if our opponent doesn't interact. Right, Prismari Command takes out Aspirants. So if I were to activate Hashap Oasis, then we have 13. So probably better to play Aspirants. Move to combats. And then where do we put the Aspirant counter. I'm leaning Conclave Mentor again. And hit for 12. So we weren't quite able to present lethal. And yeah, let's see if our opponent has their combo turn here. Fable Passage. So if they go Mizzix Mastery, Dragonstorm, we're not necessarily dead on the spot. Unless they've got the Blade Wing combo. But we'll see. Right, gonna be a looting first. So that can increase their storm count for Mizzix Mastery. Another Brainstorm. Alright, so our opponent's doesn't have the mana to cast Mastery now, so they need some sort of Sweeper to stay in it. And our opponent doesn't find it and explodes. So yeah, that's one of the advantages of playing a creature deck over a combo deck. Your game plan is going to be relatively consistent, and while you sometimes will be a turn too slow to kill the combo decks if they go off, at least there's no real fail case where you fizzle out and don't accomplish anything. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a fine opening hand. Turn 1 Elves sets up turn 2 Oran Reef Ooze. And that usually leads to good things.
probably fine to play the planes. Next room we can Pelt Collector into Spellbinder. Probably no reason to show them first, so the Ooze can attack. Let's see, Apparition, Archon, Great Henge. Probably just take the Apparition. And leave them with a very expensive Henge, an Archon, which doesn't do a great job on defense. And yeah, opponent just packs it in, already too far behind on board. Andromoka's command being an instant also helps us play around Archon's restriction nicely. So yeah, overall this is a green-white plus one counter deck. It's a relatively fair deck for historic standards, but not necessarily in a bad way. It does have a very consistent game plan, and it is still capable of aggressive draws, especially with the turn one elves powering up or three mana plays. So it's definitely on the same level as other green-white company decks, shifting away from some of the powerful three mana creatures in favor of more plus one counter synergies. So that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.